Hi, I'm the Gadget Guru, Andy Parr, and this is the Vogue.net. Well, it's a gorgeous Saturday afternoon in South Florida, and I'm riding with a buddy of mine. This is Scott from Conquest Customs, and don't worry, this isn't a commercial. That's because Scott and I, we ride together often, and what's cool, since he owns Conquest Customs, he always has a different bike. I believe that it's his practice that when he's building a bike for somebody, and especially if it's a custom bike, I think it's a good idea that you put some miles to make sure everything's put together properly. Is that how you operate? Yeah, you always want to put a couple miles on it to make sure that everything is safe for the final customer and nothing's going to fail, or if you, you know, just make sure all your torqued bolts are torqued down and your uh, nothing comes loose and all the clearances are correct and the customer won't have any problems. Well, we just took a nice little ride on this and I gotta tell you this is the first time I've seen this bike was just a, an hour or so ago. Tell me about it. Well this is uh, built for a customer in Colorado. His name is Mike. He's uh, actually in Iraq right now so we're holding his bike for him. Putting a couple miles on it here and there you know like I said shakedown is always a good practice when you first build a motorcycle. Um, what did this bike start off to be? This was a 2007 eight ball. That's how she started. I gotta tell you, it doesn't look anything like an eight ball to me. No, uh, other than the motor, that's about all that's still eight ball on her. Okay, why don't we start at the front and start telling me what you've done to this bike? Well, we started off by putting on a hammer front end. Uh, the inverted Marzocchi's with the twin disc bra brakes can't be beat, personally. Um, now, I notice that your discs, they look different than a standard disc brake. Yeah, these are a new project that we were involved with with Lindell Racing Brakes, and these are composite rotors. So we build a rotor that's not made out of metal any longer. So you have much better heat dissipation, so you don't end up with brake fade. And they also don't wear down because you have heat uh, material transfer between the actual rotor and the brake pad. Is that an expensive add-on? Uh, they run $550 a piece, so they're not the cheapest in the world, but when you compare the technology that's going into these brakes, and your brethren are, you know, Enzo Ferraris and uh, C2 Porsches, uh, it's... it's well, I gotta say, brakes are something you don't want to scrimp on. Now, the other thing I noticed, the wheels. First thing that caught me, I love the red pen stripe on this. What kind of wheels are these? Well, these happen to be Foose 1969s. Uh, we worked also with the Foos designers to build an application specifically for Victory. Now, I noticed on the front forks, carbon fiber, and I got to tell you, that is gorgeous work there. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we like to run a little bit more of a tech industrial look on our bikes. And, you know, we put a lot of performance parts, not just go fast, but they handle well, they brake well, they have, you know, the good technology materials being used. We don't just throw a bunch of chrome on it and call it a day. You know, that's one thing, and I've told people this in the past, when I've had bikes in the past, I've had the habit of overdoing it. This one looks just right. Now, as we move further back, tell me about some of the other things you've done to this one. Well, she's got quite a few little uh, additions on her. Um, first off, this is an internal throttle. There's no throttle cables at all. Oh, now that's cool. Yeah, we, uh, it's all run with ball bearings, so you have a nice snapback. Very smooth, zero play. Uh, we have the shortened levers for sport riding, so you just you have to use two fingers. And especially with now the added braking power, it takes very little effort to get this bike stopped. You pull that little lever and you got an answer. <laughs> That's good. Uh, we also have run ever, all the wiring internally, as well as the throttles. These are 2000 SC bars off of an earlier Victory. Gives you a little bit of a supermoto look. Um, much more enforced riding style, so you're uh, a little bit reaching, but again, in full control. So it's not quite the uh, laid-back touring type bike. Now one thing, and Scott, I don't know if this is your signature, but I've seen this on a number of bikes you've done. This kind of floating seat. How do you do this? Well, we, uh, it's actually the stock seat location. We just use different, a different seat and different side panels on different, depending on which model it started out as. This happens to be the correct side panels and correct seat. We just reupholstered it, and I get rid of the rear subframe on the uh, bike. The subframe on the bike comes out to about here, and we get rid of all that weight, which is about 40 to 50 pounds with the fender and the uh, subframe, and we attach the actual fender to the swing arm. Now in doing this, you create this 
nice open area quote unquote chopper type look but it's more just exposes the back tire that you got on here and gives you a real bad boy look i gotta tell you bad boy is an understatement the bike is drop dead gorgeous now a couple things i noticed your belt is exposed here now what's the purpose behind that well there's no real purpose behind that um we don't run passengers so you don't have anybody's uh pant legs or anything really getting involved with that so it's a really unique look i have to tell you that well, a lot of people actually do that. You know, it's just, uh, you know, that was the heart of quote unquote choppers. You know, they t take things off. If it's not needed, we don't really put it on here. You know, one thing that I've noticed on a few bikes you have is your exhaust. But tell me a little bit about the exhaust system that you're doing. Well, the exhausts, as are, as with a number of the components on the bike, are very automotive inspired. I, I classify myself as a car guy that actually builds motorcycles. All my bikes are have the flavor or inspiration from a muscle car era 60s 70s even 80s the customer here had a his first car was a 1985 mustang gt believe it or not mm -hmm. hence gt oh i was wondering if that was for so yeah. it plays off on his left for cars exactly. as well exactly and his car was white so i wanted to make a paint scheme on this that complemented his white mustang gt well, I tell you, your paint schemes, I've noticed you have the racing stripe, the GT look going on here, and it's a very striking, gorgeous bike. Back to the exhaust. Now, I noticed that you have an exhaust, you have a covering on it. What is that? Well, that's a header wrap. A uh, header wrap is, has been used for many, many years for insulating the heat inside the pipe. And in doing that, you get two benefits. First off, you never will burn yourself or leave your skin on your pipes as quote unquote a heat shield is not a heat shield because it just get, it gets just as hot as the exhaust pipes underneath it. And I got to say guys, that's a good thing here. So number one, it limits burning. It, it eliminates burning. You, won't bur you will never leave your skin on these pipes. You can ride it all day and just grab them. Okay. And then what's the other benefit? The other benefit, which is actually the most important benefit, is you gain horsepower. And in doing, in doing the, in the insulation, you re maintain the, and retain the heat inside the pipes, which in turn keeps all the heat inside the head. So when your spark comes out, you burn the entire uh, air fuel mixture. The hotter it is in your head, then you, the more fuel you burn. The more fuel you burn, the more power you make. Okay, I know you can't see the pipes on that side, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to turn the bike back around. We're going to give you a demo. And Scott, I'm going to ask you the big question. What does it sound like? You prepared to show me? Sure. Am I going to be blown away? Well, they're not called ground pounders for nothing. Okay, watch your computer speakers because you're not going to believe this one. Well, as you can see, we've rotated the bike around. You can now see the pipes on this puppy. It's absolutely phenomenal. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to step out of frame. I'm going to hold the mic back. Scott, let's hear what this thing sounds like. I gotta tell you something. I think I might need hearing aids. This thing just blew me away. It's absolutely phenomenal. This is different, a different sound from any other victory I've ever heard. What do you attribute that to? Well, we use a very large diameter pipe. Uh, it's two and three ace pipe, so it gives it that real deep sound. Now they're stepped and they have uh, hourglass baffles in them, so we do gain keep the performance aspects of the pipe as well. But just, you know, we want to give them a little bit of attitude. Do you have a name for the style? Well, we call it their American Muscle Series bikes. Yeah, they're American bikes built in the themes of American muscle cars, and you can't get more patriotic than that, in my opinion. Hey, I got to tell you, made in America is a good thing. And your shop is in America. This is an American made and customized bike. The last question, how much would somebody expect to pay if they want to do a similar treatment to their bike? Well, our American Muscle Series full bikes start at $26.9. Uh, you can, if you bring me, say, a wide tire bike like a Hammer or a Jackpot or something like that, the conversions start at ten grand. I gotta tell you, Scott, it's absolutely gorgeous. I've seen your bikes up close, and I'm every one I've seen from the Cobra to this all the way through, they're absolutely gorgeous. I want to thank you for your time. If you want more information on Scott's bikes, go to www.conquestcustoms.com. For the Vogue.net, I'm the Gadget Guru, Andy Parr.